This looks like a good spot. Okay, where to begin? Dear Journal, some of my favorite moments in life have been, well, some of the scariest. But I'm so glad that I did them because they've been amazing. And this week was one of them. I got to go to the St. Cloud Quarries with my good friends, Jeffrey and Seth. We had so much fun going down to the lakes. Oh, it was a blast. And I practiced my jumping because we were heading there to go cliff jumping. The St. Cloud quarries were big pits where they had dug out really big rocks and stone to make things like this column or kitchen countertops. It was so cool checking them out. And we even got to look at some of the equipment that they used to haul out the stone, like this really big, massive blade. Look at it. They used that to cut into the rock and they used really big machines to haul it out and then they would send it to the factories to make those columns and countertops and other things. And when they hauled out all the rock and stone, it made really big pits like this one. But we can't go jumping into this one because it's so shallow. We would hurt ourselves on the rocks right underneath the water there. <laughs> but we had tons of fun climbing around and checking out the quarries because all the boulders and big rocks left behind were perfect for climbing. Hmm, does this lake look like it would be good to jump into? No, there is still too many rocks right underneath the surface of the water. We need to find something really, really deep that we can jump into and go really far down into the water without touching the bottom and hurting ourselves. Oh, there Jeffrey goes. He's climbing like a mountain goat. <laughs> it was so much fun discovering and exploring and climbing around the whole area. Wow! And you can even see some of the cut marks where the blades were cutting in in order to make big chunks that other machines could haul out of the earth. <laughs> well, after checking out those first couple of pits, it was time to go and check out more. I couldn't wait. Cliff jumping is one of my very favorite things to do, but it does take a lot of courage. And as excited as we were, I think we were all just a little nervous to find those cliffs. Oh, there we are running off to the next lake. <laughs> we were trying to get there fast because we wanted to jump a lot before the sun went down. <laughs> Oh, here's the next lake that we were checking out to see if it was deep enough. It was really, really pretty. And we did find some very small cliffs that we could jump off of. But they looked a little too small. We wanted to check out something just a little bit bigger. Welcome to today's Bible Theater, where we'll be telling the story of Daniel and the Lion's Den. Hemi? Hermie, this Bible theater is not to entertain you. No, Hermie, it's for the kids. You are our actor. That's right, Hermie. Are you ready? All right. Now, it seemed good to King Darius to appoint 120 leaders over the kingdom, and they would be ruled over by three head leaders, one of whom was Daniel. Now, Daniel had favor in the king's eyes, so the king was going to appoint Daniel over the entire kingdom. And the other leaders did not like this at all. They kept trying to find something that Daniel did that was wrong, so that the king would not appoint him over the kingdom. But that was impossible, for Daniel loved God and did what was right. Then these leaders went to King Darius and got him to make a law 
that no one would go to any other god or person except for him to pray, and the king liked this idea, and so he made it into a law. Now when Daniel heard about this, he entered his house, opened his windows towards Jerusalem, and continued to pray, kneeling on his knees three times a day, giving thanks to God. Now these men who were conspiring against Daniel found him praying to God and went to Darius and said to him, Did you not make this law that anyone who prays to any other god or man besides you would be cast into the lion's den? And the king replied, This statement is true. And so they said, Daniel continues to pray three times a day to his god. As soon as King Darius heard this statement, he was distressed and saddened. He tried to figure out a way to rescue Daniel, but could not find one. And so King Darius gave orders that Daniel was brought in and cast into the lion's den. Y yes, Hermie, he was cast. But Hermie, Hermie, it's okay. You can keep going on. It doesn't end here. The story gets better. Yes, Hermie, God does show up. And then the king spoke and said to Daniel, Your God, whom you constantly serve, will himself deliver you. And his stone was brought and laid over the mouth of the den. Then the king went off to his palace and could not sleep. Then the king arose at dawn of day and went quickly to the lion's den. When he came near to the lion's den, he cried out in a troubled voice, saying, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you constantly serve, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel spoke to the king, O king, live forever! My God sent an angel to shut the lions' mouths, and they have not harmed me, because I was found innocent before him and also toward you, O king. Then the king was very pleased and happy, and gave orders for Daniel to be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no injury whatsoever was found on him. The king gave orders for the rulers who conspired against Daniel and accused him to be brought before him, and he cast them and their families into the lion's den. Then the king wrote to all the peoples and nations of every language who were living in the land, May your peace abound. I make a decree that in all of my kingdom... Men are to fear and tremble before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, enduring forever. And so Daniel enjoyed success in the reign of Darius. The End Great job, Acton Hermie. Thank you very much for helping to tell our kids of the courage of Daniel as he trusted in God to deliver him. So after lots of looking around at different lakes, we finally found one that looked like it would be good for cliff jumping. It looked deep, it was really pretty, and what was that on the other side of the lake? Oh, check out those cliffs! They looked like they were going to be perfect! Oh, it's so exciting! But it also got us just a little bit nervous seeing the cliffs because they looked safe but really high up. That was going to be a far jump. And it would definitely take courage to jump. But a lot of my favorite moments in life were when I had courage. They were a little scary. Like the time that I went to a youth group and I didn't know anyone. And they were experiencing God in ways that I had never seen before. But I went anyways. And then I got this amazing encounter with God when they prayed for me. Or there's the time where my friends were watching a scary movie and I knew I shouldn't. So I called up my parents and I went back home. I was scared that my friends weren't going to like me because I left them that night. That took a lot of courage, but I'm so glad that I did that because I knew it was the right choice. Or there was the time that I went to Africa and got to tell people about Jesus and their love for him and got to make playgrounds and even got to play with the lions. That was so much fun. And then there was the time where I met my wife, Kate, but we barely knew each other and I wanted to see if she could be my girlfriend and I called up her dad to ask if I could ask her out. 
oh, that was really scary. <laughs> but now she's my wife and we have three beautiful kids together. I am so glad when I have the courage to do the right thing or go after things that I feel God has for me. But we still wanted to be smart and use our brains and make sure it was safe. So there, Jeffrey goes into the lake. He's gonna swim over and make sure that it's deep enough so that when we jump in the water, that we don't hit the bottom. Cause you can get really, really hurt that way. So he went diving into the water and checked out a couple of different spots. And it was good. He told us that it was deep enough that we could jump there. <laughs> Even when you're an adult and jumped off of lots of cliffs into lakes and water, you still want to check the depth every single time to make sure that you're not going to seriously, seriously hurt yourself. <laughs> Seth wanted to check out the water too. And we were getting all ready to jump. It did get really hard to try and climb back up on those slippery rocks. Jeffrey and Seth had to try a couple of times. <laughs> oh, but Jeffrey found another spot that worked even better. And he found a spot near to where we were jumping where there was a big rock under the water so we had to make sure not to jump over there. And this is the spot where we climbed back up because it was a lot safer. Even though it looked higher, it was a lot easier to climb back up there. I've been cliff jumping for years because it's one of my very favorite things to do. I really like swimming and I really enjoy the beauty of being outside in nature and the rush of the jump. And when I do, before I jump, I'll close my eyes and I'll imagine God's big arms around me like he's holding me. And I'll take a deep breath and go for it. <laughs> oh, it was time to go. Oh, okay. I was hitting my chest a little bit and telling Jeffrey and said that I was having butterflies in my stomach because even though I knew it was safe, it would be such a rush. And there I go! And oh, I can't believe I did it! Oh my goodness! Leaping off of that cliff is crazy, but so much fun! Wow! <laughs> oh, what a blast! Roar! <laughs> Can you imagine being in a pit of hungry lions? Ooh. <laughs> and that's what all these pieces of paper are. We're going to make a lion and it's going to be really, really fun. <laughs> but let's start pinning together this lion and we've gotten a lot of funny shapes like this one <laughs> and this one and these. It's looking really weird, doesn't it? Well, let's put them together and see how it looks. Okay, I am gonna start cutting out the mane. All right. Here's our lion mane. <laughs> and this thing that looks kind of like a squash. Well, this is going to be his head, so we will glue that on right there and then and then I'm going to cut out this piece on the mane as well. <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay, he doesn't look much like a lion yet, but he will. <laughs> but the lions for Daniel were really scary and 
What are some scary things for us? Um, one of them could be the way that people think about us. It can be really scary to have people think badly of us, to call us names or even threaten to hurt us. And sometimes they do that when we say we believe in Jesus and we love Jesus and we chose Jesus to be our number one and we chose to follow Jesus. Some people don't like that. It's really, really important to know that as much as we want other people to think good things about us, it's way more important what God thinks of us. And what does he say? In Romans 8, he says that nothing can separate us from his love. No difficulty or hardship or even death. So Daniel didn't have to be afraid to even die because he knew that not even that would separate him from God's love. Not if he gave himself to be God's and chose God to be his number one. And we don't need to be worried either about what people think about us because God's love is always there. And he thinks the world of us. He sent Jesus to die for us so we could be with him for forever. <laughs> so even though it might hurt to have people call us names or to not think good things of us or to make fun of us, we can choose God and be full of courage, just like Daniel did. So Daniel is facing a lion, but one of the things that we might have to face is people making fun of us or thinking bad things about us because we're choosing Jesus. But what is way more important is the way that God thinks of us. Okay, let's tape this to the wall. Alright, there's our lion! <laughs> He's missing a couple of things. So let's give him eyes. Now, these lions were grumpy and hungry. We know because the people who got pit into the pit after Daniel, they weren't saved like Daniel was saved because they weren't trusting in God. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> grumpy lion eyes! <laughs> <laughs> there! Starting to look a little bit like a lion, right? <laughs> and he does look like he'd be a little bit scary. If I saw him, I would get out of there. <laughs> now, what's something else that might be a little bit scary for us? So one of the other things that might be scary, like Daniel's lions, is that we might think that God would ask us to do something that would take away our happiness or that he would say no to something that we thought would be happy and now we don't get to do it. But he has eternity in mind. That means for forever. And he wants us to experience joy for forever. And much more than just us being happy in the moment, he wants us to have a good, long, forever life with him. And so sometimes he might ask us to do some things that are hard in the moment, but it's because he wants to give us joy. He wants to give us joy that will never go away. Okay, let's give our line some ears. <laughs> okay, so one of the fun things about our line is that we're gonna make him a little bit like a paper puppet. So that if you push up and down on a piece of paper, his mouth is gonna close and open. And we'll have his mouth, oh, I put his mouth upside down, his tongue's on the top. We'll have his mouth closed and open like this. Well, I better turn this around and turn this <laughs> the right side up. But in order to do that, we need to put some tacks on the back here. And we're gonna lift this piece of paper up and down for his mouth to go open and close. So I'll get the tacks on here. <laughs> this is harder to do on. I'm gonna have to take him down. <laughs> He's just falling off the wall. <laughs> okay, let's put some tacks through the back here. Okay, let's see if that's gonna work. All right, yeah! I've got his little beard down here. 
Um, so I'll do that on right away. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> oh, the tape's in the way. I gotta move the tape up. And there we go! <laughs> <laughs> okay, time for his body. Yeah, this is even there. No, he's just got a little bit of teeth. Uh, <laughs> okay, so another thing that could be a little bit scary to us is sometimes we think we might not have enough. Sometimes people are tempted to steal because they're worried that they're not gonna have enough or they're tempted to do something wrong in order to keep their job or get more money. But Jesus told us in Matthew 6 that we don't have to worry about taking care of ourselves. He said, look at the birds of the air and the wildflowers. God feeds them and dresses them really, really well. And so we can have courage when we need it to say no to stealing or doing anything that we know that we shouldn't in order to say yes to God because we know that he's going to take care of us. Or God might be asking us to tithe or give money somewhere and we might not want to because we're worried we're not going to have enough. But God is always going to give us enough and we can say yes to him and have courage. Just like Daniel had courage with these grumpy lions. Okay, let's make his body now. Okay, so I wanted to have his hands either laying down or going up when he's scary. <laughs> so we will also attach those with tacks to this piece of paper back here. And we're going to put his body up here but I think I'm gonna have to lay him down on the table again. So I'll go ahead and do that and we'll give him arms that wave up and down. Okay, you guys, I'm really excited to see if our lion works. But another thing that could be scary is we could be afraid that we're going to be all alone. But in Isaiah 41, God said, don't be afraid for I'll be with you. And in Matthew 28, Jesus said that he would always be with us. If we make him our Lord and Savior, he promises to never leave us. He will forever and always be with us. So we don't have to worry about being alone. So we can have courage and know that God is going to be with us, even if we have to say no to being with others or if others leave us. Okay, let's see if this line works. Oh no, he works great for his mouth, but I have to make I have to make these slits here a little bit bigger so that he can move his arms up and down. So I'm going to cut bigger slits. You guys, I have to cut out a new body because his arms need to go further down on here. But that's okay, it's all part of the process sometimes. So I'm gonna get a new body going. Do you guys know what? Sometimes I go to do an art project and it doesn't work. And so I have to redo stuff all the time. But that's okay, because we're gonna try these arms. I just made the holes on our pull paper a lot lower down and I think this is gonna work. So I'm gonna cut a, a new body and we'll see if it works. Let's do it! Okay guys, I am in suspense to see if this works. I'm not sure. Let's check it out.
<laughs> there he is, Grumpy. <laughs> the only problem is he's got these little flimsy arms. <laughs> I don't know if he would catch much with paper arms. <laughs> But he's so great! Rah! <laughs> oh, stay up there, paper arm. <laughs> oh, that was so fun to me. Thank you guys for joining me. <laughs> but one of the things that can be scariest of all is death. And that's something that Daniel had to face because a hungry lion like this could kill you. But Jesus said that anyone that believes in him, that gives their life to Jesus, would have eternal life with him. So that means that even when they die, they don't really die, but they get to live forever with him. Isn't that amazing? So even when we have to face something as scary as death, we can still have courage and trust God, knowing that he's got a plan for us, which is good, which is full of love and full of joy and peace. And all we have to do is trust him with our whole hearts and have courage when it gets hard. Thank you guys so much for talking about courage with me and trusting in God and making this line with me, even though his arms are a little floppy. <laughs> I had fun with you. Thank you. Clip jumping was so much fun. And after we clip jumped a couple of times, we forgot to be scared at all. We were just having such a blast. Dear Journal, I am so glad that I had the courage to go out with my friends and do it and jump off that cliff. And do you remember when I gave my heart to Jesus? That took a lot of courage too. But I am so glad that I did that. And when I got baptized in front of my church, I am so glad that I took that leap of faith. I never want to stop taking courageous leaps of faith like that. Dear God, I pray that you would grow courage inside of me, that I would be able to go on wild adventures with you and see amazing things because I know that you are always with me and that you'll never leave me and that your forever and always love is always there. <laughs> Please grow me in bold faith and love and courage. <laughs> oh, journal, I'm not sure why, but most of my favorite things in life, like my relationships with my family and with God, and a lot of the wild adventures that I went on took courage because they were on the other side of fear. And I'm so glad that I said yes to God with all of those things and just went after them and took a leap of faith. Sometimes things didn't happen like I wanted them to. I stepped out and had courage but I still got hurt. But when I did, God was always there to comfort me and he healed me. And when I took the courage to try again and again, and sometimes even again, God was always faithful and always gave me such amazing gifts because I went for it trusting in him. And many times the things that were most important to me were things that the enemy didn't like. And I needed to say no to temptations and no to the enemy or things I wasn't supposed to do because if I said yes to those things, they would have destroyed some of the most beautiful things in my life. I am so glad that God gave me the courage to say yes to him and keeps giving me the courage to say yes to him over and over again. Dear Journal, I plan on having so many more adventures to write in you. 
because God keeps teaching me how to trust in Him more and more and more and how to have more courage that lead to more adventures and more treasures in my life and even better relationships with Him and others. Thank you, Journal, for being here so that I can write all of these awesome moments and adventures in you. <laughs> Sincerely, Chris.